Hi, my name is Michael Dessen, and this is part two of a short series of videos on how to route uh, and network uncompressed audio over the internet using Jack Trip and Jack Server. If you haven't seen the first video, please check it out because it gives an overview of the process and explains how to make a basic two-channel connection. In this video, we're going to cover some more issues about routing and a couple other programs that are helpful, and also look really quickly at multi-channel connections and three-way or three site connections. So the first piece of software um, to download and check out is QJack Control. QJack Control is available there and it's a, a graphical user interface for the Jack program which has a lot of features but we're only going to be using one in this video which is the routing feature in part because if you're using Macintosh OS uh, 10.7 or later you'll need to use this program for routing for the moment because currently uh, the routing window in the Jack server is a little buggy with those later operating systems. So you may need to use this. And even if you don't have to, it's actually a very useful tool. It's a more graphic display of the routing options. So to install QJactyl, um, very easy if you can find this binary through these links here. Uh, otherwise, you have to compile it from a tar file. But assuming you can uh, find the binary and that those links still work, install that and it, it just downloads to your computer. You stick it in your applications folder. Very simple. The next program we're looking at is JMess, which is also written by the Soundwire folks at Stanford that developed JackTrip. And it's just a utility program for saving and loading uh, routing configurations within Jack using XML files. So it doesn't have a gr uh, GUI. It runs in the terminal so we'll get to that in a moment, but just real quickly in case you're, um, these videos are actually directed towards people who aren't super experienced with Unix uh, commands in the terminal. But you do have to do a little bit of work to install and run this program in terminal. So download the binary and then put that folder, JMS, in your applications folder. Um, at that point, what you want to do is it's easiest to explain it with the, the video here. First, change directory. Use the cd command to get to that bin folder within the JMS folder. So you can do that by typing uh, cd for change directory in a new terminal window. And then if you drag the, uh, the folder uh, for the bin folder within the JMS folder, if you just drag it on top of the window, it'll display for you there the path to that folder. It's an, a nice shortcut to use your finder to help you in the terminal without having to uh, to know all these paths. But once you get in there, you run the commands that are in the install text file within the JMS folder. Um, and again here you need to be careful that you, you do it exactly following the instructions. You need to always be careful when you use the sudo command because you're logging in as a root user and you have the potential to mess things up on your computer. So just follow the instructions carefully. Once you do that, um, it should be installed properly so that it can be run from anywhere on the computer. And to test it, there's a simple way, which is to open up a fresh terminal window and type JMS. And if it's properly installed, you should see this display um, just as a way to check your work that it's properly there. Um, so then the next thing we're going to look at, once that's installed, we'll, we'll get to how to use it in a minute. But First, let's look at an example of how to create a multi-channel connection, meaning that you want to send more than two channels of audio between the different sites. The default in JackTrip, as you saw in the part one video, was just to send two channels of audio, left and right. But the beauty of JackTrip is not only that it sends uncompressed audio, but also that you can send as many channels as your bandwidth supports. Um, so to create a multi-channel connection, it's basically the same kind of, of command you ran in the first video with one added step, which is the dash n for number of channels followed by a space and then the number of channels you want to run. And it's important that both people making the connection do the same uh, thing here. In other words, if you're asking for four channels in the connection, they need to run that as part of their command. So you see here the commands listed for the host and client, just example commands. And in this clip, you'll see the host running a command to start a four-channel session. So as you'll notice, it doesn't actually look any different in the terminal window. In other words, the jack trip side really looks the same. It just, it just establishes the channels. But where you actually see them show up is in the jack server routing. So that's what we're going to turn to now and look at how to route, uh, in this case, not using the routing window or connections manager in Jack Pilot, 
but instead these other programs that we just installed, QJactyl for routing and JMS for saving and reloading routing configurations. So one thing to understand is that you should not open up QJactyl until you've already established your JackTrip connection. But once you've run the JackTrip commands, you open the QJactyl program, and as you see here, uh, basically you just click on the little connect button there in the main uh, small window to open up the window where you're going to do the routing and it gives you a visual display so you can see here uh, the four channels of jack trip coming in and out and so now it of course all depends on your interface if you actually wanted to route all four channels out of your computer separately you would need an interface that had four outs the routing is pretty straightforward in QJactyl. Uh, you just select an item on one side, select on the other side, and then click the connect or disconnect button at the bottom. This person is routing the incoming jack trip channels one and two to a single channel, uh, playback one, to go out, and likewise three and four to playback two to go out. But of course, if you had an interface with multiple channels in and out under playback, you'd see many more options there. So one of the things that happens when you get into complex routing, particularly where you have multiple sites and multiple channels, um, is that you, you need a way to save. And if you notice in the QJactyl program, there's nowhere to save a configuration of routing. So if it crashes or if you just need to restart for some reason, you have to redo all of these connections, which is really a drag. So this is why the wonderful folks at Stanford have written JMS. So what uh, the next clips are going to show they're going to walk you through using JMS to actually save connections. But before we do that, uh, let's look at the idea of how to create a three-way connection to begin with. In other words, a three-site connection between three different locations, or really just three different computers. So the main idea of a three-way connection is that actually it's not a three-way connection. It's a series of two-way connections using a host client or server client model. So really the only person who has to deal with the complexity of this is the host because the clients are all just connecting to the host using the same commands we've looked at so far. But the host is the person who's going to make multiple connections with multiple clients or single connections with multiple clients using multiple terminal windows. So the way this works is through port offsets or essentially assigning different port numbers. The port is uh, numbered, these are UDP ports, and the default number port that JackTrip uses is 4464. JackTrip actually does not give you a way to specify the port number directly by a number, but what you do is you use an offset of a positive or negative number, which gets added onto that default. So in this example here on this slide, the, the host set up a, a port offset of 10 using the dash O space 10 command added after the server command. And if you're the client, you do it after the IP um, or after the IP is where you put the options like the number of channels or the port offset or any other option that you want to use, um, which again, those are listed. If you type jack trip into a, a new terminal window, you'll see a list of all the commands. But in this case, the port offset of 10 means that the port for that particular connection is going to be 4474 because the 10 gets added onto the default of 4464. You don't need to worry about the numbers so much, but you do need to make sure that the port offset corresponds between the host and the client in each case. And one other command that is not listed on this slide, but it's very useful, is the client name command. There's no abbreviation for this, so you just have to type two dashes and then client name, all one word. And again, you can always see these commands listed if you type jacktrip in the terminal window. It shows you the usage of all these commands. So the client name command is very useful, as you'll see in this next video clip. So here you see the host computer, who has two terminal windows open and each has a different command uh, to run a, a jack trip connection with a different remote client. And in both cases, they've used uh, the client name command just to keep things straight. Um, this helps you identify the client both in the jack trip uh, terminal window there and also when you go to the routing. So as you see here, they're opening up routing in QJack control. And I often find that when I first um, 
open the routing window for a, a, a multi-site session like this, it's often easier actually to route from scratch because the default, default routings just create a lot of uh, mess there that you have to go through. So I often disconnect all just to get back to zero. And of course, this means no one can hear you um, or each other right away. But then you just um, tell them to hang on as you go through the routing here. And as you can see in this example, New York only has two channels. Uh, San Diego has four. So these are you can do multi-site connections with people that use different numbers of channel per connection. But in this case, uh, the, the host is routing first routing uh, New York to San Diego and San Diego to New York so that they can hear one another and then routing their own audio uh, to their own playback system. So basically, this is all just about how many channels your interfaces can support and also your bandwidth. But uh, we've done concerts with, you know, 16 channels going in each direction or four channels among multiple sites. It can get very complicated very quickly. So this is why you use JMS in order to save and reload routing configurations easily. So as you'll see here, once the routing is done, uh, it's possible to to save it all by opening up a new window in the, in the desktop or wherever you want to save your routing configurations. And you open up a terminal window um, and drag the address of that folder where you want to save your routing yeah, using the cd command just as we did earlier with the install this is, this is again just a shortcut to get the path uh, to that particular folder or directory so that in the terminal window you're you're in that directory and so we're now in the directory jms setups on the desktop and if you forget the commands for JMS, you type JMS and they'll all appear there. It's a very simple program and it shows you the usage and the, the, the commands. So to save the current setup, you type JMS and then space dash S for save and then space again, and then the name of the file dot XML. And it, as it's telling us here, the uh, XML file gets written to that folder. So then uh, what I found is that if you do want to reload a routing configuration, it's important to actually disconnect everything and start from scratch. It's very easy to do with the dash D command in JMS. As you can see here, it disconnected everything and then you reload the, the configuration file and it reloads it just as it was before. In this case, using the dash C command for connect. So that's basically it. I hope this has been helpful. If anything's unclear, uh, please leave a note in the comments section. And again, note that in the notes underneath the video, you can find links to the slides used in this video, as well as the software installations and uh, a manual that is in progress about JackTrip. Thanks a lot.